So let's just dive right in and answer the question on the thumbnail that kind of sets the basis for the entire video. Did the clones we all know and love actually have rights? I mean, after watching the Clone Wars TV show, it's made overwhelmingly evident the clones are of course sentient, and that all the different soldiers have differing personalities as well. So naturally, one would think the Republic would have to comply with some sort of intergalactic standard for sentient being rights, right? Wrong. Unfortunately for our beloved clones, they had no rights protecting them and were essentially at the mercy of their owners, who were of course, in this case, the Republic. Unless you were lucky enough to be placed under a chill Jedi general and more importantly chill clone commander such as the famous 501st duo of Anakin and Rex, you as a clone were pretty much allowed no freedom of thought and no freedom of speech, and thus had to comply with a set of rules that if broken, could result in severe penalties, especially if you had a bad clone commander and general. This is you, CT3333, a normal clone that isn't fervently loyal to the Republic, but still does his job and patrols Kurison as a shock trooper 7 days a week. Although you're an all round good soldier, every now and then you have some traitorous thoughts. You hold on to these thoughts until you can't bear to keep them inside your head any longer, and you tell your close friend CT2222. CT2222, unbeknownst to you however, is deep down inside extremely loyal to the Republic, and tells Commander Fox. Commander Fox, being the scumbag that he is, court marshals you and you ultimately end up in a Republic prison, or even worse, executed. Having traitorous thoughts such as desertion or disillusionment by itself isn't punishable, because who can read your thoughts anyway, right? You cross the line however when you start spreading this potentially damaging idea around, and if you don't spread it to someone you can trust, you'll most likely face severe consequences. Unless of course your clone commander and Jedi general were rather progressive for Star Wars standards, meaning you could trust them not to snitch. With all this said, there was usually no worse punishment given for disobeying orders, as not only were you seen as a traitor to the Republic despite the fact that you may have actually done good, but you were also 9 times out of 10 court-martialed and ultimately executed. Although you may think the whole clone army was as fair and forgiving as the 212th and 501st, that simply isn't the case. There were many legions, both known and unknown, that had extremely harsh Jedi generals and clone commanders, who would not hesitate to imprison or execute clones that they deemed traitors to the Republic. When it came to the more minor offences such as being late to training or your post, it once again really came down to who the authority figure was. Just like in the real world, 90% of the time, these mistakes were simply overlooked by superiors, with an unspoken agreement that it wouldn't happen again. That said however, there were of course some clone leaders that could have massive power trips, or just dicks in general and could ruin your day for no real good reason. Remember, as I stated before, don't be fooled into thinking that the Republic was as fair and cushy as the Clone Wars TV show portrayed it to be. It pretty much only told us the story of the 501st, 212th and Wolfpack, all of which were commanded by good and fair leaders. For the many other clones of the Grand Republic army however, this wasn't a luxury they could afford, and due to the nature of their superiors, they had to adhere to both the written and unwritten rules of the Grand Republic army. The unsettling reality however, is that this is how Palpatine originally intended the whole army to work. I mean, why wouldn't he? It'd guarantee the utmost loyalty when the time came. Although for the most part, it still did work this way, there were anomalies such as the 501st, that threatened the very integrity of the Republic army. And who knows, if the war had lasted even one to two months more, there could have been a lot more defectors in the clone army than there originally were. But hey, that's a whole nother theory for a whole different video. Also guys, we've managed to smash that 500 user goal on the Steam community. So as promised, I'll be shouting out one person's YouTube or Twitch channel, and that person must make sure he also has a Discord so he can message me the URL and description of the channel. And that's not all. As you all know by now, we'll also be doing a 25% discount on all Geeksy's Gaming Network donation items from January the 4th to the 5th. So make sure you're on when we have these killer deals active and at the ready. As always guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.